Okay, after a lot more break-ins, here's what's kind of been going on. Look at the bottom of this gear. I find that very interesting. It's turning like a orange-gold color. And that is uh, because of, look what it did to the shim. Flattened it like a pancake. I mean, this is probably less than 0.1 millimeter now. I mean, it flattened the heck out of it. Um, you can actually tell that it's bigger than the normal 0.1 millimeters. <laughs> it has uh, flattened it and it's bigger. Here's a really good comparison in what the shim size difference is. This is what I started with. This is what I end up with after the gear break-in. <laughs> yeah, so there's a huge difference in size there. So, um, I can't seem to find, I'm not sure what happened to the top shim to this. It's possible, I guess, that I grinded the heck out of it and it flung out. Uh, because if you look at the bushing here, it's uh, pretty much, it shows a lot of uh, wear. And then if you look here, a lot of wear, wear down. So, um, like I said, I really don't like that the, uh, um, this bevel gear pushes. It's being pressured by the pinion against the uh, gearbox uh, shell and there's nothing I can do about that because when I close it there is the smallest uh, space to shim this and then the motor comes in and it presses against it so it just it's just like this inside the gearbox there's nothing that can be done uh, even if I lower the motor as, as low as I can go I mean it's really low um, as can be <clears throat> so it's not cool um, I guess I can try a G&G motor to see how different the pinions are. So here's the aim top. Move my stuff out of the way for a second here. And uh, where's the other motor? Here is the two different motors right here. So one above is aim top and the one below is G and G. You can see a height difference. This one's much longer. Let's make sure they're about even first. The base plate, well, there's that's about straight line right there uh, the base plate yeah everything's longer everything's longer but let's look at the um, the pinions here they look pretty similar so I don't think I could get away with installing this G&G &G motor. I'm just going to probably stay at the aim top. Um, what am I going to do though? I mean, I have to keep it really low on the motor height. And then uh, even then it's going to still grind into the bushing over time. The problem is, is even if... Even if I cut down the bushing, if I cut down this bushing, it'd be level with the gearbox. You can see grinding all around it, see right there. So, um, it'd be level with the gearbox and that would still be a freaking issue. So here, if I was to cut this down and allow it to go down further, that would do no good for me because I need to come up. I need to come up but also push down away come up from the pinion and down away from the pressing right here so this needs to come this way 
obviously I can't do that. And I think the reason it started doing this is because the shim's gone. I cannot find the shim anywhere. I looked all over the place. Um, I think the shim just, uh, it's, it must have flew out somehow. I mean, I knew I installed it in there and it's really weird, but the other one's really, really, really uh, flattened. So maybe it got flattened too much and it flung out. Not sure. I looked all over the place. I couldn't find it. So um, I guess I'm going to work on this a little bit more. This is just demonstrating more of the gear break in. Oh, as far as spinning, it does spin a heck of a lot better now. But I think I'm going to continue a little bit more. It's still not what I like. <laughs> Found the shim. <laughs> Wow, look at that. <laughs> so it looks like the, uh, it's because the shim failed, and I put another one, and that seemed to probably fail, because look at how much worse it got. All that blackness right there. Wow. Um, there's not much on the other bushings. Look here, and there's a lot of a uh, little bit of black there, a lot of black here, a lot of black. So, pull this off, and uh, looks like the shim is gone again. So, that must be uh, <laughs> will probably be reoccurring. Okay, this feels grinded down by the gear. It feels uh, very flattened. Kind of see here, it looks like the gear had grinded it down. And of course the uh, shim is gone. I was checking to see if it, was, if it got flattened again. It's gone, so I pulled this up. And uh, it looks like that got flattened a little bit. Gear looks fine. It's really dirty. Okay, we got some signs of swirling going on here. What's up with that? Didn't have signs of swirling just a little bit ago. Does that mean that the... Uh, The shim is somehow uh, coming down. I'm not so sure. Well, that's really black. Really, really black. Right there too. Really, really black. These bushings still haven't moved at all from the glue. What has is this down here too. Oh wow. Look at that shim. It's almost pointless to even put a shim if this is just going to happen. It's going to tear up and get in the gearbox. It's paper. Very, very thin material. Okay. So go ahead and put this back in. Now I know... I know the gearbox should not be able to... Uh, or excuse me. I know the... Uh, Spur gear and sector should not be touching at all. So that shouldn't be happening where there's lining down on it uh, starting. It's starting. You can see it right here. So we're going to open it up or close it real quick and see if it's really possible that it has changed since I shimmed it. I really doubt it though. Just getting that bushing out. 
setting it to the side. Wow, look at how different it looks. Looks like there's a piece of the shim. It's got completely torn up. Okay, so the shims beautifully or spins beautifully. With this it doesn't spin as beautiful, but this I mean even if this is tightened, I'm sure that it spins really nicely. I don't think these need to be gear broken in anymore, just this. Got this dirt really close. Okay, so put this back down. And what we want to do here is uh, screw it closed and check it and confirm that it didn't move. See, there's a tiny bit of space. I moved the shims from the top to the bottom of the, of the sector. Before I had 0.5 millimeter on there when I was testing it, it would still get stuck. So whatever was sticking uh, is no longer sticking and it spins beautiful now. And I'm not sure how because I know I tested with the flashlight to make sure that there was space something has fallen down or something so that the gear is coming into this one more so I just moved the shims on it uh, is there more space I can slightly pull pull it up um, not sure whichever happened but it's working beautiful on that part so the gear break-in is definitely working it's going great and pretty soon I will be having this in the M4 Wow, it spins a heck of a lot better. See, if I compared it to this, it moves with slight resistance. This moves a little bit better because of bearings, but... At least I can spin, spin it now. Before, I just couldn't spin anything. It was ridiculous. So I'm going to put the bevel gear back in there and do the same thing. Okay, after more break-in, gear break-in, it looks like this bushing is uh, starting to make the uh, bevel gear off-centered. Watch when it spins. See, look at that. There's plenty of room now for it to spin, so I'm going to change that bushing. I'm not sure yet, but uh, it spins a whole lot better. I mean, it spins now similar to the other gearbox after, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes of uh, gear break-ins. Took a couple breaks, came back. Spins with the least amount of resistance right now that I've, I've felt in a long time uh, after that, so yeah. Spins a heck of a lot better, you can just tell. Okay, so we're going to open it up again and look at it. Okay, so here is a close-up. It spins. Before, I had problems where it wouldn't even freaking spin. It was so solid. It would just spin to a point, get stuck, spin to a point, get stuck. It spins a heck of a lot better now. I don't feel the resistance I did before. So I think I'm uh, ready to stop breaking in this gearbox. So yeah, it spins a heck of a lot better now. So I'm going to go ahead and put this gun together uh, probably tomorrow. I'll catch you guys later.